You're listening to the number one podcast for nonprofit leaders, getting your nonprofit fully funded. This is the Fundraising Masterminds Podcast. All right, we're back. We're so glad that you're with us for another episode of Fundraising Masterminds. We've got a great episode lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about starting a nonprofit. Oh, yeah. Five things nice. that you got to do to start a nonprofit. And Jim, yeah, I'm, I'm excited so excited about, about this. this one. Uh, I think this is going to help yeah. a lot of people. But yeah. before we get started, yep. if you wouldn't mind just hitting that subscribe button on YouTube or following us on Spotify or Apple. Yep. Uh, we've got a lot of great content coming and we would just love for you to absolutely. be able to get that later on. So go ahead and do that right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to be honest, I'm really excited about this topic. I, starting a nonprofit is so important. It's never easy. And I, I can't tell you how often I get questions from individuals that are just starting a nonprofit or struggling. What are the next steps? Mm -hmm. What to do? How do you fund a nonprofit? Nonprofit right. from the beginning. Yep. So this is going to be a great, great uh, session for today. So we're really starting at the very beginning here, which is point number one. We are. We're getting back to basics. I mean, we are. We're starting from the very beginning. Not, not even assuming that you even have or want a nonprofit. Right. And really, this came from one of my friends. I had a conversation with. She was a missionary over in Uganda. And, you know, right. was there for two years. They actually adopted a child from Uganda, came back and just really had a heart for right. the people there and wanted to help out. Right. So just like so many people, right, that yep. they, exactly. they start with, oh, I want to do some good. I want to make a difference make in the it, world. Yeah. And her mindset was just, well, I, there's a bunch of people that want to help me. Uh, so how can I just send money over? Right. So right. she just starts collecting money yep. and just, you know, sending money through Vimo or PayPal or whatever way she can. Right. But it's all going through her. Right. Yep. And then as we start having this conversation and she's calling me and saying, well, you know, I want to get other people involved and they want to be able to donate on the website. Right. And right. how does this all work? And yeah, she knows in her mind, like, I should probably start a nonprofit. Yeah, but that seems like a, it's income. I mean, she's taking it, it right. right in. So technically, she should be declaring that as income. Right, and really, you know, they know. You know, people know that. You know, I probably should be starting a nonprofit, but right. it, it feels overwhelming. It feels right. like an overwhelming task. So. Yep. I guess that's one of our first points is, is a nonprofit right for you? Right. And the answer to that is you should start a nonprofit if you've got two things. Number one, is the mission of what you're trying to do going to be dependent on individuals donating money right. to make it happen? Yeah, is that important to you? Right. Uh, right. Do you want to fund it through individuals or right. how else? Yeah, because I mean, if it's if you have your own business and you're just going to give money out of your own pocket, right. that's a totally different thing that's right. than having individuals contribute. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of organizations that people fund, self-fund the organization, right. but if you want others to be involved, then right. that's important. Yeah, so then number two, to the people who are contributing, does a tax deduction matter to them? Right. You know, and a lot of times when people are giving to charity, they kind of expect a tax deduction. Well, out. you want to take advantage of those opportunities out there. I mean, there are five hundred one c fours. There are lobbyist organizations, yep. uh, special interests that you don't get a tax deduction for those gifts. But if if that's important to your your donors and, yep. and important to you, right. then you got to do that. Right. So really, if those two things qualify, right. then you should start a nonprofit. Yep. Right. If it's yep. something that you're gonna be self funding, right. uh, you probably don't need to start a nonprofit. But right. for her, she was like, you know, she said, I've got friends and people that want to help out. And so, right. you know, you really don't want to be, you know, taking money in to you and then having to manage all that. And right. you can right. do that with for a a little bit, but you well, really want to get Well, it seems like she, she hadn't really thought through things, which is important. Mm -hmm. And number two, it wasn't like she was trying to do anything wrong, but she just wasn't providing the opportunities right. uh, and, and wasn't, you know, thinking through all those things. Right. And that's what ultimately, you know, I said, you know, you really need to start a nonprofit. You really need to get a board. You really need right. to get things together because I said, is this, is this just a little, and that's, that's another that's another question is right. what you're doing to help out. Is it just a temporary thing or is it an ongoing thing in right. your mind? Right. right. Because yeah. I mean, there's one thing to just raise a little money and send it over and it's a yeah. one, one and done. Yeah. Thing. Short it's term. Like, yeah. You right. know, is it worth setting up a whole organization just right. to do that? Right. Probably not. Yeah. But 
if this is a long-term thing in your mind and in her mind, she's like, yeah, I want to get people to support us monthly. And I want, you know, I want this to be a, I have this vision for what it is. So right. then I'm like, well, what is your vision? Right. You know, and it really boiled down to, well, I want to get these kids off the street. And, yeah. but what does that actually look like? Yeah. You know, and it's, she hadn't really thought it through. Yeah. Well, Jason, when you started Heart of Zambia, how, did you start with thinking, well, I'm going to create this organization that goes no. on forever? Or did you just I had no originally idea. just think this is an idea? I'm going to send over some money to help a good guy. I mean, I mean, yeah, I think the same thing with me, right? It's yeah. like it started off as just, oh, they need this little thing, so I'll help them do this. And then, you know, next thing you know, there's more people giving than I thought. And right. there's momentum that starts, and you're just like, oh, man, I didn't think that this was going to be a <laughs> yeah. thing, but I yeah. guess it's a thing now. Yeah. You know? Well, a lot of nonprofit leaders, they spend years just managing momentum. That's all they do. They don't set out a plan, a strategy that just all of a sudden it, it just gets out there, and they're just right. trying to, they're trying to hold on is this right. bucking broncos going down the, yeah or it's yeah. all built around one person oh yeah right like right. you know this one guy had this one experience and right. everyone just kind of supports him but you're not able to really get outside of you know the people you know right because uh, right. I, I told her you know the people who are going to support you are probably going to be your friends and family right and they're going to support you because they know you right so they're really supporting you that's they're right. not supporting the mission or the vision right as soon as you get outside of your friends and outside of your family and you and other strangers right are discovering what you do yeah they're yeah, gonna right. they're not gonna be motivated to give monthly just because right. it's an opportunity well you know and, jason that actually is one of the biggest steps one of the biggest hurdles to get beyond mm -hmm. I, I can tell you how many organizations are run by FOJs, friends of Jason, friends of Jim. <laughs> you know, they they the organization goes on for years just being funded through friends. Mm -hmm. You got to, to turn that corner, though. You need to get beyond that. And what that means is that you have to you have to have a mission and vision and a strategy that others buy into because the, like you said the, the first group of people are are going to support because they love you they could care less in a sense what right. you're doing right. that next group has to care about what you're doing right we're really getting ahead of ourselves because that's well, we kind are. of point three sure. in a way but yeah so point one i would say is you know is a nonprofit even right for you right right and point two is once you've discovered yes I do want to start a nonprofit, then how do you actually create a nonprofit? Right. And there's, you know, I've got like there's one, a couple two, key three, steps, yeah. four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Seven things. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven. So once you've decided that you that starting a nonprofit is right for you, then there's right. really seven things, seven things you should do to yeah. start a nonprofit. Yeah. And here they are. Number one, you need to name your nonprofit. Yeah. Which seems like an obvious, easy thing. Seems simple, but I can't tell you. It's someone who has named nonprofit organizations and people have used the name and just been clueless to what, mm -hmm. what it means. I think uh, it's so I did that. important. Did you do that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, my nonprofit at uh -huh. the beginning was called the Fundeasy Foundation. There you go. Yeah. What does that have to do with Zambia? Right. Absolutely right. Absolutely nothing. Well, yeah. because I was thinking a little bit long -term, more- Long term. Broader, long -term, right. Long term. Yeah, term sure. And, right. Yeah. Um, and I realized- after we kind of got started, yep. this name isn't helping me. Right. I mean, who wants, in a sense, who wants to give to the Fund Easy Foundation? Right. But the heart of Zambia, right. that, that gets to, that pinpoints yep. the, you know, the passion that people yep. have. So pick and, a good name. Well, and, and it's so important marketing-wise. I believe we ought to choose a name that says it all, says exactly what we do and who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if, you, if you get big enough as an example, Example, Campus Crusade for Christ. I mean, it says it all. It, it was uh, now some of the terms in there are 1950ish. It was Campus Crusade was started in 1951, but it was a campus movement. It was a yeah. crusade and for Christ. It said it all. So right. it was bringing the message of Christ to college students. That right. says it all. Now. 70 years later, we could change the name to Crew uh, because number one, people kept that name short, yeah. but now it says it all. But also, we actually have spun that to be more of, of a conversation piece. I'm sitting in a plane, and someone says, well, what do you do? Well, I work for an organization named Crew. Well, what's Crew? 
right there sets up the platform yep. for people to ask what yep. what who is crew and what we do so picking a name is a lot more important than you may think it is so mm -hmm. make sure that you you don't create that name in a vacuum and right. just all of a sudden you know run it by other people to see especially yep. people who don't know who you are does right. it say who you are i would also say a good thing to do when choosing a name is to google whatever name you come up with oh because yeah. you want to see what else is pulling up in the search results right. and i would also recommend that you you know look it up to see if there's any other legal names right there's there's ways of just googling you know how to look up legal name in whatever state you're in right. Um, right but you should definitely do that make sure there's not another nonprofit or another organization with the same name because yeah. you're going to be competing with them yeah. you know but that's you know the first thing you should do probably the most important thing you should do um, the next thing we have on our list is choose a registered agent. Yes. And a registered agent is just the entity that represents the organization from a legal perspective. A lot right. of times these are lawyers or they're whoever is setting up your nonprofit. Right. Now, if you're setting up the nonprofit and you're doing everything yourself, then you would be the registered agent. But um, now, Jason, nonprofits that I've set up over the years, I've used an attorney mm -hmm. uh, and they've done a lot of that for me and they serve serve as as the registered agent but i know you've set up some nonprofits and not used an attorney why don't you explain to our audience how you could do it and how you did do it without using yeah. an attorney well one of the easiest ways to set up a nonprofit, in my opinion is just to use uh an organization called start church and these guys right. aren't paying me any money to say this, but <laughs> I'm just going off of my personal experience. Right. We right. aren't sponsored by Star Church, no. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Star Church was a great organization. Yeah. It was recommended yeah. to me by a pastor mm. uh, who right. they set up his church. And it's literally like you just call them up, have a phone conversation. Right. They ask you some questions and then they send you a template you fill in. It's kind of like right. a fill in the blank kind of thing. Um, it's not like one of those legal templates. It's like, right. it's one of their, they have like a questionnaire, mm -hmm. right? So right. you fill out their questionnaire, they, you have a conversation with them and then they basically like draft all the documents. Right. They fill right. everything in, they create the bylaws. They just ask you, you know, yeah. what's your mission statement? Yep. What's your vision? Who's the board of directors? Uh, and that's one of our things on there is yeah. uh, point number three and point number four is you've got to have a board of directors. Right. And you also have to have bylaws. Yeah. Yeah. But if you use an organization like Start Church, they actually give you we'll a starting you. point yeah. for bylaws. They'll say like, well, this is how most bylaws look. Right. You know, and then they, they work with you. So they have lawyers on their team. Now, right. Start Church, when I did it, I think it was around $2,000 I had to pay for the service. But it was, for me, it was... It was worth it because I just wanted to get it done and I didn't want to have to mess with paperwork and yeah. whatever. So it was worth the expense. But, but Jason, sometimes you have to pay a little money to make sure something is done right. Right. Because, you know. Well, it, I had other friends who started a nonprofit and he did it all himself and it, it took him like six months to right. eight months. Sure. Because he had to research all the forms. He had right. to figure out how to write bylaws. He had to figure out how to do this yeah. and figure out how yeah. to do that. And, you know, so that's. You really, it really boils down to uh, if you have money, you right. can save time. Right. If you have time, you can save money. Well said. Um, but, you know, for me, it's easier to just raise the capital that you need, like, to start. Right. You know, and then right. just do it right, get it done fast. Yep. And, you know, yeah. then you know it's done right and you don't have to worry about it. So. Right. Well, Jason, getting on to the board issue that you brought up, yeah. uh, it's so important. Um, I, I see a big mistake I see a lot of young nonprofits uh, do is they will get warm bodies for right. their board. And you need to remember that if you're bringing someone on your board, you need to be thinking into the future. I, I Too many boards have just set up by someone who, who – doesn't know what they're doing, so as a result, they bring on someone yeah, they just else. Call their doesn't friends. Know. Sure, they call you know, their hey, friends. I'm starting this nonprofit. Yeah, will you, you sit know. on the board with me? And how quickly those people rise to their level of incompetence. And uh, I it just, it's <laughs> right. so sad because when I've gone in and worked with some of the board members, I thought, wow, they are way over their heads on this. Right. And you've got to, you've got to think three, five, ten years down the road. Is this the kind of person that is going to help me 
grow and get to the next level. Yeah. So getting your right board is important, but minimum generally for the IRS is that you have a president and you have a secretary, at least, you know, the president to lead the meetings and the yeah. secretary to record yeah. minutes, but certainly grow from that. Ultimately, you want to try and get up to the perfect board size is 12. That, and of course, hmm. you know, biblically, we know that 12 is an important number to Jesus for advisors, but it really is. It's been proven hmm. that 12 is the perfect number, but don't don't feel like you need to get to 12 the first first couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, yeah. You uh, work up to that. Yeah, start with a couple uh, good qualified people and then move to move to, you know, 3 to 5 to 7. Well, and really when you're thinking about board members and you're thinking of good qualified people, try to diversify the the knowledge, right? So it might be good to have someone who has um, you know, compassion for the mission, but then it would be good to have someone who is good with money, right? It'd be good to have someone who's good with business. Yeah. It'd be good to have uh, someone who's good with uh, maybe investing or thinking in the future. Yeah. You know, so just having like that, you're looking at yeah. me like you're not well, sure. Well, oh no, Jason, you always love for me to add my personal opinion in and sometimes <laughs> even a little controversy on things. Yeah. I'm going to throw in some controversy to you. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do it. There are two individuals Two yeah. kinds of people who all the research shows that they tend to make the worst board members. Okay. The first one is a pastor. And that is because they generally, you want your board to be able to help you raise money and lead an organization from the overview. Hmm. Well, pastors got, have got a lot of conflicts of interest. They've got their own budget. They've got their own um, needs that they have. And, and this also just doesn't narrowly focus in on pastors. It's other ministry, other organizational hmm. leaders. Um, they, they have... And they have a conflict of interest in that they've got needs, but there's also that difficulty inwardly that somehow in the back of your mind, you're saying, I've got to raise money for my organization. Now I have to raise it for this one. Right. The other area is attorneys. Uh, what is the sole obligation of an attorney? It's to punch holes in things. And I can tell you for a nonprofit leader yeah, and probably and not the best idea. Not somebody who's going to question every dream, every thought, you know, the the key to a good leader in a nonprofit is what you are. You're a visionary mm -hmm. and and you need to be able to hash out ideas. You and I, we talk often about your dreams, your ideas and things. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we may may get two out of ten where we actually are realistic and we can actually do them, but right. it's those big dreams. I'll take those two. Those are two that most people don't even have. Right. Right. The attorney, all they do is they just punch holes right. in, and and it's just their makeup, their character. That is the way that they were trained to find the negative in everything. Yeah, so CPAs probably too. CPAs, <laughs> <laughs> CPAs. Uh, the the thing that I do like there is there is something to that, Jason. Uh, and you're right. I mean, CPAs tend to also look at things more glass half. Uh, empty than half full. However, uh, I th I think there are times when we do need people to paint a little realistic picture, mm -hmm. and numbers don't lie as much as we want to. So yeah. I think CPAs actually uh, we do I I cut the CPAs uh, a lot of slack when it comes to that. Yeah. Uh, so we've got so far we've got um, you know get a name together. We've got get a registered agent. Choose your board members, your bylaws. Uh, next thing is your articles of incorporation. Right. Right, which I think is pretty self-explanatory, but um, you can Google what that is, but pretty much just declaring what it is that you're all about. Yeah. And a, it's a legal form yeah. of And like that. you said, there's if you're working either with an attorney or something like you mentioned that service yeah. earlier, they're going to have a template on this, those things. This kind so of stuff sounds... Sweat. Yeah, this kind of stuff sounds really scary. Overwhelming. And overwhelming, yep. but yep. all this stuff has been done right. so many times. There's so many templates. Actually, another website that I really like to go to um, is called Rocket Lawyer. Yes, And right. you can go to Rocket Lawyer and just type in anything. You can type in, uh, you know, um, articles of incorporation right. for a nonprofit, yeah. and they'll have 
the articles of incorporation right there with blanks and yeah. you can just, just type it out and they'll, they'll fill in the blank for you. They ask you questions, you know, and right. you just fill it in and, yeah. and you get the articles for like, and they have a $5, you know, trial. Yeah. Right. So it's pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. The next thing you need to do is you need to get an EIN, and yep. that's just a registered federal tax number. Employee identification and number. You yeah. just go to the IRS website and type in register an EIN, or to right. go to Google and type how do I register an EIN. Right. You just literally do it on the IRS's website, and yep. it's free. It doesn't yep. cost anything. You can do it yourself. There's so many things out there that are like, you know, we'll, we'll help you start this, you know, and we'll... Right. We'll get you an EIN and they charge like $200, you know, and all right. this stuff. And it's right. like, it's, you just go to the website yeah. and yeah. create it. It's like That's creating right. a login for a, for an account. So yeah. it's pretty yeah. easy. Yeah. Now the good news, Jason, uh, with the IRS and sometimes, I mean, it can take anywhere from three months to six months to a year to get approved for your 501c3 status. The good news is hmm. that the IRS allows you to take in donations. Now, if for some reason After you get the, Rejected. Are, after you filed. After you filed, yes. Right. Thank after you, yeah, you have right. to submit your documents. Right. But once they've received your documents and they've yeah. gotten that. Open letter, your case, your yeah, file. Yeah. Then you're free to start raising funds right. and doing right. your thing. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Now, for some reason, a rare exception that you wouldn't get accepted, right. you'd have to give those gifts back. Uh, but right. but the good thing is that you can you can continue to go on. You can have an event. You can have the perfect dinner. Right. And you can meet nope. with people individually that's the good yeah. news so the final thing you need to do is you just need to open a bank account and again that's a business bank account right right and you need to bring in your ein and right. you need to bring in your your proof that you've created yep. everything yep. and you've submitted everything to the government everything qualifies under the patriot um, act yes yeah and you right. gotta follow um you also have to submit to the state as well right so that's right uh, you have to yeah. submit to the federal and to the state yeah. Right, but you bring the federal documents in, you bring the state documents right. in, um, you show your EIN number, and then they'll right. let you create your own bank account. Yeah, and what right. really once you have all that in line, you're good to go. Right, you know, so that completes right. step two. Now that that might seem really overwhelming, but literally, I signed up for Start Church. Right, and like within a week, it was done. Yeah, so yep. I mean, if you've got the money to do it it's worth using a service like Start yeah. Church. If you don't have the money to do it, I'd say it's worth <laughs> trying to save up the money to do yeah, it. Just, I, I was gonna say it's <laughs> worth the cost even though it's a little bit more money. Yeah. It, it's always better to get it done right. Yeah, yeah. so that leads us to point number three, which is don't just start fundraising and you know doing whatever you think needs to be done. That's the biggest mistake most people do. What, yeah. the, what point number three is, is develop a vision for the long term. Right. Right. That's point number three. Right. Develop a vision for the long term. Yes. And what this is, is imagine where you're going to be two years from now. Like right. imagine if, if there were no obstacles. Right. Imagine that anything could happen. Right. Where do you want to be in two years? Right. In a perfect world. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to be in three years? Right. Where do you want to be in five years? Where what would be your absolute dream? Right. If, you know, a billionaire came in and just said, I'll write you a check for as much money as you want. What is your dream in ten years? Yeah. You know, it's important to define those things. Right. Because if you don't then you just fall into the whole scarcity mindset, right? Of just existing is really all you do. And eventually you'll hit that downward spiral. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you'll want to, before you get past those things, before you start asking for money from other people, you want to make sure that you have that vision established. because. Right. You're like we said early. You're going to have people that are going to give you money early on because they know you. But right. if you want to get beyond that, you're going to have to have that vision and that dream. Yep. Scripture says, "Without vision, people perish." Yep. And so it's so important that little dreams don't inflame the hearts of men and women. You got to have that that plan. Yeah. Well, and I experienced this personally as well when I went to Zambia back in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, didn't think I was going to start a nonprofit, just was thought it would just be a trip. Uh, the Lord put it on my heart to do it. And even then, I just thought it was going to be a short term thing. Like yeah, I just thought, right. oh, we'll help him a little bit. For, yeah, I had no sure. idea that this was a long term thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but as things started to kind of morph into yeah. this long term thing, mm -hmm. uh, I actually had a hard time trying to get 
other people involved than just my family right, and friends. Right, it right. really was like I was sending an email out to everyone I knew, <laughs> sure. which the majority of the people that responded were close family right. and close friends. That knew you. Yeah. And that knew me, that knew the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And and the people who didn't know me very well to just ignore it. Right. And then when I later on, when I created a social media account and started to really try sure. to get out even more, yeah. then it was like, these people were like, we don't know who you are. Kind right. Of thing. Like, yeah. You're just, you know, you're, you could be a scammer. Mm -hmm. I remember right. doing a, I remember doing a fundraiser. I think it was the truck fundraiser oh, that yeah. we talked about yeah. earlier. Right. You told me about this. Uh, I posted a video on Facebook and I right. paid for advertising to try to get it out. Right. To try to just right, spread right. the word. Yeah. And Facebook shut it down. Yeah. Because they were like, this is too scammy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and people were <laughs> complaining that this guy is trying to, uh, and it was like, man, this is crazy. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. isn't it funny? Who defines scammy, huh? It's right. just, it's so, yeah, here it is. I mean, this is a genuine cause and people didn't think it was real. Yeah, so I mean, it's just I all the more solidified the reason why you need to have a vision, right? Uh, because people buy into vision a lot more yeah. than they buy into, you know, I need money, right. Uh, right? As soon as as soon as a stranger sees you kind of in their minds begging for money, right? It right. just feels icky. Yeah, that's and right. They don't like that feeling, right? You know, and yeah, yeah. and you don't like doing that. No, like, I don't like right. asking strangers for money, right? Um, yeah. I would much rather present the opportunity and let them choose whether they want right. to invest, right. yeah. you know, and I think that's a better way to do it. So, Well, it's been said that every organization has needs, but few have exciting opportunities. And that's what we've got to remember as you're putting mm -hmm. your plan together is that it's not just please help with my need. Uh, we need to keep the doors open. We need to keep the lights on. Right. No, we've got an opportunity. We have got a plan, and we'd like for you to come alongside and right. help us accomplish this plan together. That's yeah. how you're going to get funded. So just to recap, we've got five things that we are talking about getting a nonprofit started. The first one is just determining whether the nonprofit is even right for you. Right. Uh, second thing is creating your nonprofit. Yeah. Um, third thing is determining where you want to be in the long run. Right. It's really just What's your establishing vision, where you're headed. Yeah. Your mission, yeah. vision, and values. Yeah. And then that plan, that strategy, you get there. Right. You and I were talking earlier this morning, Jason, about, you know, heading out on a vacation and how many of us just get in the car and just start driving? Um, you Not know, me. unfortunately, we, we would hope that we don't do that, but too many nonprofit organizations, that's kind of how they act. Right. It's like they just get in a car. I mean, if you want to go to the Grand Canyon, you mentioned to me about doing, yeah. taking a family vacation. Well, you know, heading due north from where you live in Tennessee is not the way to get to the Grand Canyon. No. You got to go west and right. you have to follow the directions to get there. Yeah. And there's steps along the way. And it's, it's the same way with our plan. We've got to, right. got to have that plan to fund that. Yep. So once you have your plan, you know, the next thing is to raise the seed capital. Right. And Jim and I highly recommend that you shoot for a ten to fifteen thousand dollar seed capital budget. Right. And the reason why we recommend that is because we're actually gonna use your seed money right. to put together a vision dinner. Right. And the vision dinner is where you're really gonna get yes. your funding. That's right. Right. So Tell us about well, that. Well, I shared early on, you and I were having a discussion this morning. I shared with you something that I learned very early on is that when you want to establish nothing will help you raise more money than going face to face with people and mm -hmm. establishing a, a deep meaningful relationship with people but that takes time right. and you could be out of business before you actually get those relationships yeah. established right. so you need something that that fire starter almost like that kindling right. that that gets that bonfire going right. and that is the perfect vision dinner strategy right. that's what you want you want to get that little seed money that can capital, 10 to 15,000 to help you get prepared and ready for this. Right. Now you might be listening strategy. to this and going, whoa, 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 whoa. You're talking about 10 or 15,000. That's a lot of money. I, know. I mean, the girl right. that I was Same talking time. to when I started talking these numbers, she was like, I thought, you know, a thousand dollars was a lot of right. money. You That's know, right. you're telling me I need to get 10 to 15,000 of seed money. Like right. I can't, I don't even that those numbers seem too big. Right. Well, first of all, what I would say to you and what I would say to her is ten to fifteen thousand is not a lot of money. You have to yeah. start thinking, yeah. you know, hundred thousand dollars 
is pretty common for nonprofits that have a pretty good vision. Right. Uh, 100,000 a year is a pretty common number. Uh, Even when I started my nonprofit uh, with Zambia, I kind of, in a way, had that kind of scarcity mindset. And once I started really pushing the vision, I remember towards the end of the year, just adding up all the amounts. And I was like, I, we raised like $75,000 this year. Right. And I wasn't even like trying. Try, right, you know? exactly, so yeah. yeah. I think when when people sense your excitement behind right. something, you know, yeah. if you think about $10,000, it's 10 people yeah. that invest $1,000, yeah. which is totally doable. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe 20 people that give, give 500 dollars, right. You know, and yeah. so when you think about it like that, or you say, well, I need, um, you know, five people to give me a thousand dollars and right. then, you know, 10 people to give me 500. Right. It's not, when I've done fundraisers in the past, there's always usually about 20 people that tend to fund yeah. the whole thing. That's you right. Know, it's not, we, we tend to think like, oh, if I could just post this on Facebook, yeah. and everybody's gonna everybody's give. gonna just if yeah. one, if if everybody just gave a dollar, you yeah. know, I have five thousand yeah. oh, friends. Oh, golly! You know, please don't get me off on the myth of the multiples. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Right, but it's it's that it's that yeah. mindset of like, if everyone could just give a dollar, yeah. then it would solve our problem. But the reality is, is that you're probably gonna have like. 10 or 15 people yeah. that fund the whole yeah. thing. Well, I talk about the critical few often. It's that 20% that bring in 80% of your dollars. Right. And it's it it will be like that. You know, you mentioned earlier, Jason, the scarcity mentality. We've got a video out there that's uh, in our YouTube library on the scarcity mentality. Yeah. I would look that up because the difference between the scarcity and abundance mentality is like night and day. Yeah. You do not want to go down the path of the scarcity right. mentality. Check out that video if yeah. you could. Well, you might be overwhelmed and you might be thinking, well, how do I raise, how do I practically raise this seed money that you're talking about? You know, 10,000 seems like a lot to me, but you make it sound easy. Right. So what, what do I practically do to actually do that? Yeah. Well, I actually have a lot of experience raising money online. I actually ran and started a company called FundEasy and mm-hmm. we've helped ministries raise hundreds of millions of dollars using FundEasy. Well, so they actually have a free platform called FundEasy Crowdfunding. Yeah. And you can go to FundEasy.com Right. And you click on their products. They have three products, attendance, peer-to-peer, and crowdfunding. Crowdfunding yeah. is a free platform. You can create a free account. Yeah. And what it'll do is it'll get you all set up, yeah. kind of like a GoFundMe, but it's yeah. a GoFundMe for organizations. Right. right? So you right. take advantage of the nonprofit status yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And basically, you get a page, you mm-hmm. get a meter, right. you put in your goal. So you put in $10,000, you put in... This is the reason why we're doing this. We're raising ten thousand dollars to, you know, reach this potential, whatever your vision is for the future, right? right? Like your two-year yeah. future, your three-year v- yeah. future. I would say uh, that's what you would pitch to people, right? Right. These are the things that we want to shoot for, yeah. and this is a seed money campaign, right? To try to get us started, yeah. Right. And so people know what they're giving to. Yeah. I would recommend that you create a video mm-hmm. of just even if it's just a simple video of right. you holding the phone, just talking, just, explaining, just explain it. Yeah. The more real you can make it, right? You know, and if you can use Better photos videos. or whatever yeah. to pepper in yeah. there, yeah. But it doesn't have to be complicated. No. It doesn't have to be. In fact, yeah. I think it sometimes it, it would that, be that raw footage, yeah, sometimes yeah. is so well received now. But, Absolutely. But that's what you need, right? Yeah. The, the fundraising webpage is kind of like your business card. Yeah, it because, adds credibility to right. what you are. And really what you want to get to is what Jim said, which is the next step in that is your personal appointments, right? Yeah. So you want to be going and to talking with people one-on-one and getting appointments and when you get someone who's kind of interested, yeah. you send them to your website as a point of action. Right. But Jim, tell me a bit about the personal appointments and how that should go. Yeah, well, you know the old adage, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And it's really that way with our major donors. How do you get to your $10,000 goal? Well, one partner one donor at a time one gift at a time and it, you know it can really snowball you could ask 10 people like you talked about earlier to give a thousand dollars you chip away at that just one person at a time right. and let people know what your goal is fred 
I want you to know I'm trying to find 10 people that are willing to give $1,000. I've got to raise 10,000. Will you be one of those 10 people? Right. They need to know that their gift is important, that right. if they don't give, the ramifications are that you might not reach your goal, right. and they, 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 they're an important part of that. And right. so you need to share with them what your mission is, your vision, yeah. your strategy, your plan to get there, and yeah. will you join me? Right. Will you come and and yeah. you know hop on the bus with right. us? And we're moving down the road, yeah. and your thousand dollars will make a difference. Well, and I think so often we're intimidated in asking people for money oh, because always. we feel sure. bad, right? right. It's kind of so it's that beggar uh, mentality that yeah, we start so to think. I think a big mistake that people make early on is they don't have something written, right? You know, they yep. don't have a web presence at all, right? And they just go in and they just say, "Hey, you know, I'm trying to." start this thing yeah, and I'm, you wouldn't want to you know, would you and i'm maybe? not sure you know but yeah. if you wouldn't mind considering you right, know, right like right. i would really appreciate yeah, it yeah and it's kind of like it doesn't really come off as this really strong confident confident yeah, that you know where you're going right and people you know I, nobody wants to give to a sinking ship or something that's right. rudderless right and uh, that's yeah. yeah if you don't so, yeah present that. i would highly recommend that you print out like a one sheet of just what is your mission, what right. is your vision, what is your values, right. what are you all about, what do you plan to accomplish in the next three years, right. why should they give to you, yeah. Yeah. and like put yourself in their shoes, yeah. right? Yeah. Imagine that you were them, and you this person was coming to you, uh, would you be more willing to give towards someone who is like, you know, I'm kind of thinking, or would you be more willing to give to someone who put a piece of paper in front of you and confidently said, right. I'm looking for 10 people to give me a thousand dollars to help me accomplish this. Right. You That's know, right. would yeah. you be willing yeah. to be one of those 10? Yeah. Yep. You know, that yeah. is going to yeah. be like, whoa, yeah. this person really knows what they're wanting to do. Well, and remember all your goals need to be measurable. That's so mm -hmm. important. And they need to be fundable. Right. So in other words, are they going to make a difference? I mean, you could put a goal on there that we want everyone in our community to feel good. Well, right. you know, that just, yeah, you no. know, that, that's, that's it, nothing could be squishier, yeah. but it, you want something specific and that we're going to make a difference with your right. gift. Well, going oh. back to my friend in Uganda, mm -hmm. right? So when we first started having a conversation, she was saying, well, you know, I came back and people want to help out and they want to help me. And, right. and I'm like, well, what do they want to help with? And they're like, well, there's just so many needs over there. Right. And she was just being very general. Yeah. And I was like, Okay, people are just giving to you because because you're excited and yeah. they and they're they're really giving to you. They're right. not giving That's to right. Uganda. Yep. I said what what would you be what would be the ideal thing if money wasn't an object, what would you do in like three years from now or right. two years from now? She was like, Oh well, really what I wanna do is I really we really need to get these kids off the street. So yeah. we really so I said, Okay, well then you need land. Or yeah. you need a home, What's right? Gonna take, where where yeah. are they? Where are yeah. they going to be if they're off the street? Yep. Well, we're, they're going to need a home. They're going to need this. And I'm like, are they going to? Are you going to feed them when they're in this home? Are you going to give them food and shelter? Are you going to yeah. educate them? What are you going to do with right. them when they're right. off the street? Sure. And she's like, well, I don't really. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I think I. I think we would want to do this and this. And so I was helping her think about right. what could actually happen. Yeah. And I said, okay, now that you kind of have an idea of what you would actually do. Price right. it out. Like, yeah. what does yeah. it actually cost to yeah. buy land? Right. You know, what's the cost? She was like, oh, I don't really know. Yeah. What's the and cost what, of feeding somebody for a day, yeah. a week, a month? Right. Uh, what's it going to take to provide housing, blankets, whatever? Right. Yeah. right. And so, you know, knowing all that stuff leads us to the final point, yep. which is having a vision dinner. Right? That's right. So we're talking first, just to recap. Uh, first thing you want to do is, is a nonprofit right for you? Right. Second thing is actually starting a nonprofit. All those steps. Third thing is developing a long-term plan. Right. Uh, and the fourth thing is getting that seed capital. Yeah. Right? Now, the seed capital is what you're going to use to start your vision dinner. Right. Now, a lot of people might think, why do I need to, why can't I just raise, instead of raising $10,000, why don't I just raise $50,000 on my seed capital and then just do it just yeah you know and the, the reason that the way. reason is actually uh kind of mind-blowing mm -hmm. but not everyone really thinks about it is because really if you're thinking long term right we are not interested in doing little baby fundraisers all the time right 
Right. Uh, I tried that for a while. How many car washes would it take yeah. for you to get your I did that for a while. Uh, when yeah. we started yeah. Zambia, I mean, I'm telling mm-hmm. you, I did everything wrong. But when I when we started doing it in Zambia, it was one fundraiser after another, right. after another, and after another. Right. And I can tell you, after the third or fourth or fifth oh, yeah. fundraiser to the same people right. that were my friends, right. I was seeing less and less and less and less people jumping on. Right. And that started to make me feel uneasy because I was like, oh man, people are starting to get worn out with this thing. Right, They're like, right. this is your thing. Yep. You need to figure it out. They yep. weren't saying that to me, right. but they were kind oh, yeah. of saying that yeah. with their money. Right. Uh, and I felt it, you know, I felt it as I was talking to people, I'd see their eyes kind of roll back in their head. Glaze or, over or you whatever, know, just yeah. Like they're not interested. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so really I started thinking, I need to get this thing out to more people. Right. If I really want this to be successful, yes. I need to find people in the world who are passionate about the same thing I am. Right. And that's what I'm trying to get at with point number five is point number five, having a vision dinner is all about building long-term right. partners. That's right. Yeah. And that's it's what we want to do. Moving away from that little group of friends of yours to the next level in the concentric right. circles of influence. Right. Who are those people who so, don't know you as well? Yeah. So, I mean, if I could do it all over again, and I'm just telling you, you can do it my way. Right. right? Just do lots of little fundraisers and yep. run with it. Yep. And but a I lot tell of you, organizations do. Yeah. I'll tell you, you know, two, three years down the road, you're going to have less people interested in your organization. Right. If I could go back in time yeah. and do it all over again, I would raise the seed money I need. Right. You know, and maybe it would be for something, you right. know, maybe I would, maybe sure. I would be raising 25,000 for whatever, but I would keep a portion of that. Right. And I would use that to have a vision dinner. Right. And the vision dinner is what's going to bring more people in from the outside. You're bringing right. in people who don't know you. Yeah, that's um, right. And again, a lot of people might be listening to this and going, well, I don't, how, how does that even work? How do you find people that don't know you to come to a vision dinner to give you money? We've got the answers. Well, that really feeds into our course, right? Yeah, it does. Um, and you'll hear us talk about this a lot, but we have a course called the Perfect Vision Dinner, and you can check it out at fundraisingmasterminds.net. Uh, but Jim, tell us a little bit about what the Perfect Vision Dinner is. Well, the Perfect Vision Dinner strategy comes from 2,500 dinners over the last 38 years. We have put together a model that has transformed many nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. And we've got a step-by-step strategy. We put more than 40 hours into training videos and materials that we will show you, will give to you, and allow you to be able to feel confident about putting on this strategy yourself. Right, and this Perfect Vision Dinner is something that we know feels, you know, especially if you've never done one before. Right. You know, people, sometimes they call them galas, they call them banquets, they call them- Vision dinners, victory dinners, whatever. Victory dinners, yeah, Yeah. there's all kinds of terms for them. Um, And there's all kinds of ideas on how to do them. Uh, But again, Jim has done over 2,500 dinners in his lifetime. And through my software company, I've worked with thousands of nonprofits and I've seen all kinds of ways that people have done the vision dinner. And we've really discovered that there is a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And so we put together this course, the perfect vision dinner to really act as your guide, right? And to, to kind of take you, it's really designed to, if you, if you don't know what you're doing at all, or if you've tried it, but you just want to improve, it's meant to be a a guide where we come alongside of you arm in arm. We actually walk you through the process, Uh, but we call it the perfect vision dinner, a guide to get you fully funded. And we call it the perfect vision dinner because it's perfect for you. Yeah. Because we work with you, we try to understand your organization and we We, craft it to be perfect for you. you. Uh, But the goal of the Perfect Vision Dinner is to get you fully funded in the next five months. And it really, it takes about five months to plan a vision dinner and it costs roughly 10 to $15,000 Right to uh, pull a complete dinner off off, uh, up front, you know. From start to finish. Now you're going to make a lot more than 10 or 15,000. Right. I mean, I don't right. want to say a number, but yeah. I mean, the average yeah. I would say is anywhere from yeah. 80,000 to 200,000, yeah. maybe even more, depending on how many, yeah. uh, depending on where you live, depending on how many table yeah. hosts you can get. But all that stuff is what we yeah. you know, go through in our course. Um, and we also talk about 
uh, development best practices and right. all kinds of stuff like that. So if you're interested in something like this, uh, we actually have um, two times a year, we do one time in the spring and we do one times in the fall, um, typically around like May and uh, October-ish. Right, that's right. Time frame. And so we do it typically leading up to that coming season, but we have a number of people who have taken it even a year in advance. Right. So if this is something that you're interested in, check it out at fundraisingmasterminds.net. And again, if you found this content to be really helpful, do us a favor and just click the like button on YouTube and subscribe because we have lots more great content coming your way. And we just love for you to, to be a part of it. And please comment on there if you liked what you heard today, if this was yeah. new, was cutting edge. Share this video with your friends, your colleagues, people that you mm. know that are starting nonprofits. Get them to watch the video yeah. as well. Help us get to the people who get are starting word now. out because we really do want to help people. Uh, and I'd also say, if you have a question for us, a lot of times in these podcast episodes, we will be answering people's questions. So yeah. just put your question in the comment and we'll address it possibly in a future episode. So that'd be really great. Well, Jim, those are the five steps to starting a nonprofit and getting fully funded. Right. There's a lot of episodes on YouTube on the nitty gritties of starting nonprofits, but not a lot of people talk about the starting of a nonprofit as well as getting the funded and getting us past right. to the first yeah. uh, three years. Yeah. So yeah. really the key there is you know starting that seed money. Uh, and then using that seed money to grow with the right. vision dinner strategy is going to really launch your yeah, ministry yeah, into yeah. Uh, a whole nother ball game right. right from the beginning. Another level. And that's yeah. really what we want. Yeah. And that's going to set yeah. you apart from being that little mom and pop shop, do it everything on your own to you're actually a real right. organization that's making a difference in the world. That's right. Well, we hope this episode has been a blessing to you. Yeah. We wanted it to be down in the down in the weeds to a degree so that you'd know exactly what to do if you're starting a nonprofit. Yep. So thanks again for joining us on the Fundraising Masterminds podcast, and we look forward to seeing you in a future episode. Take care.